Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Now, we've had this one in the bank since 2022, as we wanted to save it until the next run up to Christmas. Uh, I'm really not sure if this is going to fit in anyone's stocking, but check those sugar levels all the same and get that sweet tooth out. We've been contacted by Louise Pugh from a company quite aptly called The Christmas Decorators. Exactly what it says on the tin, Louise is looking for some bespoke Christmas decorations, larger than life of course, tailored to her residential client's wishes. The idea is to have some oversized candy canes to adorn the outside of the residence, framing either side of each window. I'm going to warn you guys now so that you're not too disappointed later on, this is a very private client at the other end, and so unfortunately we can't share any finished shots of their estate, which is a real shame, because it's going to look fantastic. But we're grateful to be able to show you guys the process behind the creation all the same, and hey, I mean that's what you're here for, right? Right? We begin by creating polystyrene patterns of effectively four different designs. As these are going to go on a wall, we're creating only the front half of each candy cane with an open back, and so we're making two larger patterns, handed left and right, at just under 2 metres tall, and two smaller versions at about 1.5 metres. These polystyrene patterns were coated in a water-based plaster mix, a material that you might find in home construction stores to help fill any blemishes on your home walls. We then sanded this down to a smoother finish in preparation for mould making. We've gone over with a layer of our secretly sourced sticky back tin foil and a PVA blue release agent just to help the master pattern release from the mould later. We then proceed with a gel coat of resin and multiple layers of glass fibre. When all of the resin has cured, we remove the master pattern from the inside. As we're going to be creating numerous casts from each mould, it's beneficial to spend a good amount of time now cleaning up all of the interiors. The better finish we get on the moulds now, the less work we'll have later on needlessly repeating the same cleaning up on every cast. Where's your muscles, Aiden? When the moulds are all smooth on the inside, we then go in with release agents before a gel coat, resin and glass fibre once again in order to create the casts. A little trick of the trade when casting something in this fashion is what we call green trimming. This is where you allow the resin to cure to such a state where it can then be trimmed by hand with a knife and you can take off the bulk of the excess material to save having to grind off more excess flash later once it's fully cured. There you go, it's not all fun and games, it's almost like we know what we're doing. These tabs are being left on the casts as a simple way for the client to fix these to the outside wall. For the eventual artwork on the candy canes, we want to create a reusable template so that the red and white stripes are uniform on each cast. With the mould no longer required for casting, we're cutting sections out of the glass fibre whereby we can lay this onto each cast and do a test with a bold red spray. All of the colours we're using are going to be 2K car body paints, durable and suitable for outdoor use.
Unfortunately, as we half expected, there was a little too much bleed spraying between the mould and the cast, creating a misty line, but this mould template will still serve a purpose, as we can use it to draw the same lines on every cast in order to start masking them up. We'll repeat exactly the same process with the three other moulds corresponding with their individual sets so that all the lines on all the candy canes are the same. The client has requested for the candy canes to have a red gloss finish with the white having a frosty twinkle and not just a twinkle in the paint. This now means that all of the casts need to be lined up, hand painted with a PVA glue over all of the white surfaces, to then have white glitter sprinkled on and left to dry. Bearing in mind we're creating over 20 casts, each with either 6 or 7 white sections, we're talking well over 120 individual areas that need to be hand painted and glittered. This all takes time and is all part of the process, and here you can see in the video that even though we gloss over this part of the work somewhat, it's important to recognise that a word like just, in a sentence like, can all of the canes just have a twinkling of white, is more work than first meets the eye. I mean, it's frustrating. I'm looking at a fully finished photograph here of the candy canes all set up on location, and as predicted, they do look fantastic. However, our non-disclosure agreements with our clients still have to be respected, and we're just grateful that we can show you the behind the scenes work. Like I said, it's a shame as they really do deserve to be shown off properly, but orders are orders. Thank you very much to our client Louise Pugh from the Christmas Decorators for a fantastic festive project and we look forward to any more work in the future. We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel so please feel free to drop a comment below and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of these videos. We love having you guys on board and if you'd like to support our family run studio you could find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.